What do you want in this new year? This is a question that comes around once a year when the calendar changes and you often hear of worldly goals of losing weight, eating less, exercising more, etc. I say worldly only to those who would find an ultimate end in those things themselves. To those who would better themselves at the expense of others. But I ask you saints this question because it's proper and right to pause every so often and make sure we have our basic Christian fundamentals in check. One thing every Christian should want more of this year in their life is glory. For the careful listener out there, yes, I really did just say glory. And for those of you just joining us, yes, I said glory. The evangelical church has been losing many battles because we are afraid of glory. Many treat it as a disease thinking if we caught some glory by accident, it would kill us. Worse yet, if we were actually striving for glory, heaven forbid that. But we need to let scripture inform our thinking on this. Romans 2, verses 6 through 8 say this. He will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patience in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality. He will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. We are commanded to seek for this glory. We were made for this very purpose. And so if we fail to seek after this glory, we are in sin. So the question I have is, where are you this morning? Are you just bumping along in life? This life that God has given you, this life full of treasures to be unearthed, are you you just apathetic towards it all? The Bible calls that sin. And it needs to be repented of. It's sin because our good God has packaged an entire world that is meant to be unwrapped. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings is to search things out. That's what Proverbs 25.2 says. So perhaps the term glory is a bit too abstract for you and you feel like you can't get a handle on it. You feel like you can't grasp it. You don't have any categories for it. So how do we grab onto this glory thing? If that's you if, you, if you, if you're struggling to understand that, then you need to start by reading Psalm 144, verses 12 through 15, which says this, may our sons in their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars, cut for the structure of a palace. May our granaries be full, providing all kinds of produce. May our sheep bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. May our cattle be heavy with young, suffering no mishap or failure in bearing. May there be no cry of distress in the streets. Blessed are the people to whom such blessings fall. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. This psalm describes glory. This is the kind of weighty, heavy glory that we must ask the Lord for. Pray for this kind of blessing over your family, your church, and your nation. Why? Well, one reason is because it's commanded in Scripture. And two, because these are the kinds of earthy blessings that our Lord is pleased to work with. So do you have families? Then you have glory. Do you have food? Then you have glory. Do you have food and clothing? Then you have glory. And who is the one who has given you all these things? It is the glorious one. You owe him everything. You owe him a life of seeking after this glory that he offers in the only place in his son, Jesus Christ.